converge along this axis where there's relatively little obstructing material. Unfortunately for the companion galaxy, it's staring straight down the donut hole. And the jet zone of impact is like the widely scattered blast of a cosmic shotgun. The problem with this jet of high-speed particles and radiation hitting the little galaxy 20,000 light years away is that the jet is wide enough to encompass a large number of stars in this galaxy. So any creatures living on any planets orbiting any stars in that galaxy are in serious trouble right now. What if it were our own Milky Way being blasted by the Death Star galaxy? Put Earth in the path of the jet, and the effect on the ozone layer would be enormous and deadly. The gamma rays from the jet in 3C321 convert nitrogen gas into nitrous oxides, and it's those nitrous oxides that actually act as a catalyst in the destruction of ozone. So within a matter of weeks to months, maybe up to a year, the ozone layer will be completely obliterated. That's a nasty consequence. But like many phenomena observed in the universe, there is a recurring paradox. From death comes life. 3C321 not only destroys, it also creates. So one of my favorite things about 3C321 is it demonstrates really clearly that black holes don't just gobble everything up in the universe. They're not all complete harbingers of destruction. The jet that is coming out of 3C321 is hammering into the side of the companion galaxy. And yes, of course, that's a destructive force. But the ultimate legacy, actually, is that the gas clouds that get compressed during this interaction can actually form stars, and the stars can form planets, and the planets may even form life. So this is beautiful cycle of birth and rebirth and destruction that's synonymous with the universe and black holes. One day in the future, our own Milky Way could form its own merger with the nearby Andromeda galaxy and create a new Death Star galaxy, a violent act that would certainly spell doom for the Earth. Such an event would likely occur many billions of years in the future. But there are other stellar threats streaking through our galaxy at high speed. They are hypervelocity stars, and nothing can stop them. To the human eye, stars paint a tranquil picture in the heavens above. But take an up-close look. A select few are death stars on the verge of extinction, and these cosmic beasts are anything but peaceful. Eventually, a star will burn through all the hydrogen in its core and convert it all to helium. Once it does that, it has to be massive enough to be able to ignite the helium and convert helium into heavier elements like carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And this releases an enormous amount of energy. This process is the same release of energy that goes on inside a hydrogen bomb. Though they are incredibly violent, most of these stars will one day burn up and slip quietly into the afterlife as stellar corpses called white dwarf stars, smallish balls of electrons and nuclei destined to never again burn brightly. But some are supermassive stars, so energetic they end in a fantastic supernova explosion sometimes even produce the largest of all blasts, the gamma ray burst. But for a few massive Death Stars, the end is a new beginning. Consider the second life of a neutron star. When a massive star explodes in a supernova, its core sometimes collapses to form a black hole. But much more frequently, if the core isn't massive enough to create the black hole, it forms something almost as weird, a neutron star, a small but incredibly dense body. It actually has a huge amount of material compressed into a very small space. So you have 
for example, the mass of our entire sun squeezed into a space maybe only a couple of tens of miles across. The gravity is so strong that the protons and electrons inside the atoms of the star are actually pushed together to form neutrons. And a neutron star can remain stable for billions of years. Neutron stars by themselves pose no danger to their celestial neighbors unless they can find a partner. You can also get another death scenario for stars where there's a sort of mutual suicide pact between uh, two neutron stars. These are called co-orbiting neutron stars, a phenomenon initiated when two neutron stars begin an intimate but doomed relationship. Their orbit narrows over millions of years until they finally meet in a flash of light. And in so doing, they can generate a violent explosion, a second life in a sense. So there's two different types of gamma ray bursts. There's short bursts, which have durations of less than two seconds. And we think that short bursts are produced by merging neutron stars. The short bursts are different than the longer GRBs produced by collapsing massive stars. The gamma ray burst emitted by two colliding neutron stars may be short, but it's powerful, equal to the energy released by the sun over its entire lifetime in less than two seconds. The worry for us? at least two dozen pairs of orbiting neutron stars exist in the Milky Way. A very nearby gamma ray burst, first and foremost, would get rid of much of the ozone layer. That could have disastrous effects on Earth. Some estimates hold that a violent neutron star merger occurs within about 3,000 light years of the sun every 100 million years. That's about the same interval as the mass extinction events recorded in the Earth's fossil record. Is it coincidence, or should we worry that the last tangle of two dying stars might eventually blast the Earth's ozone layer with deadly gamma rays and alter the planet? Scientists don't know the answer. The chances are probably about the same as a runaway star plowing headlong into the Earth. It's a remote possibility, but fearsome to contemplate. You can actually have the possibility that a collection of stars that perhaps were all together in the same neighborhood interacting with each other sometimes ejects a star just to wander off on its own. As far as we know, there are no wandering stars headed our way. But if that were to happen, it could be quite interesting. One scenario could see the Earth's orbit around the sun disrupted by the gravitational pull of the wandering star. One dramatic possibility is that such a wandering star simply kicks the Earth entirely out of the solar system. And so we're now wandering around without a source of energy, the sun. No one really knows what would happen. It really depends upon the angle of approach, the mass of the star, etc. Wandering stars can travel up to 60 miles per second, fast, but still not fast enough to escape the Milky Way's